Hey, what's up guys? Legal Bro here. By now you know that I am a consumer class action attorney. I represent veterans, service members, consumers, wage and hour employees. I represent everybody that is the little guy, right? Against the man. Who? He's the guy that took Shamu out of the Pacific and put him in a chlorine tank. That's for you, Jack Black. And he's burning down the Amazon and he kidnapped Shamu and put her in a chlorine tank. Anywho. What we're talking about today is security deposit cases. How do you get your security deposit back? And what are the most common ways that landlords try to keep it? We're going to take a look at all these shorts. We're going to take a look at some that are attorney shorts, some that are layman shorts, and hopefully give you the tools to fight back against your landlord trying to unlawfully keep your security deposit. Let's get into it. Minute and discuss security deposits. How can you use them? When can you use them? Well, your best rule of thumb is clearly explaining in your lease how a security deposit is going to be used. Um, not every lease does this very well. If your lease is absolutely silent, you may run into a brick wall after your tenant has left. If you try to apply the funds of a security deposit in a way that they feel is improper. This will likely mean that you'll receive a demand letter, possibly a lawsuit in which a tenant can sue you for three times an amount of wrongfully withheld deposit. So real quick, folks, this is a landlord attorney teaching landlords what they need to include in their lease agreements to make sure that their interests are protected. I can tell you I'm the guy that sends his client a love letter, right? A demand letter that says, hey, you didn't follow the notice requirement you didn't do x y and z under the state law right the landlord tenant law for your state florida we have the landlord tenant act i think it's statute 83.49 right and it talks all about the requirements of returning a security deposit what this landlord attorney is talking about is trying to make sure that landlords are protected and what they can include in my opinion to try to recover some of that security deposit when you move out. To get around this, make sure your lease clearly identifies what you can do with a security deposit. Do you have to give an itemized detailing of how the security deposit was used after your tenant was vacated? If you don't know, you're in trouble. So in Florida, you have to send a certified letter to the tenant's last known mailing address that says what portion of the security deposit you're keeping and why. And the tenant has a certain amount of time to respond to those allegations. And from there, that's the start of the conversation of keeping a security deposit. If the landlord fails to send a certified letter to that tenant's last known mailing address, then they may have waived a right to your security deposit. Let's take a look at another security deposit video. Some examples of normal wear and tear include fading carpets, loose grout lines, small scuffs or marks on the walls, and warped doors and windows. All of these are examples of very minor property damage that should not be deducted from the security deposit. Some examples of property damage include large carpet stains, holes in the doors or the walls, broken windows, peeling or unauthorized wallpaper. These are examples of things that cannot be fixed easily and may require a dedicated cleaning service. In these cases, part of the security deposit deposit may be deducted to cover all the cleaning expenses. I don't know if I agree with that one, folks, because most states do not allow offsets that work like that. You can't just as a landlord say, all right, tenant, we're at the end of your lease. I think you caused 500 bucks worth of damage. I know you gave us a thousand dollar security deposit to start. Here's 500 bucks back. Go away. You actually have to start a dialogue through the through your state's notice requirement, right? So if your state has a notice requirement like the one in Florida, you can't just do an offset. That would be improper and may cause you to lose the security deposit automatically. What you would have to do is send that certified letter to the tenant's last known mailing address and then tell them why you want to keep a portion of their security deposit. The offset is not going to cut it if you're a tenant and this landlord has done this to you, they may have violated your rights and you may be entitled to your security deposit automatically. 
Do not get sucked into these offsets. This is the way that these landlords like to play games. They tell you, oh yeah, don't worry, you're moving in. You don't need to fill out this silly pre-move-in checklist of what's wrong. This place looks great, right? Meanwhile, you're finding the dog hair in the corners. You're finding the carpets ripped up or the tiles ripped up. You're finding all these issues, right? Handles are being ripped off of cabinets as you're moving in. Doesn't even make sense. Obviously, the landlord's playing a little bit of gotcha. Let's go on to the next one. <laughs> Ignore. Oh, hey, Mr. Landlord, you've been ignoring my texts and calls. Oh, wow, what are the odds? Uh, not ignoring, exactly. We moved out two months ago. Where's our security deposit? Well, I, I had to withhold it all for damages. No, no, no. We completed the pre-move-in checklist with you to know any existing damages, and we took good care of the place. Plus, we always paid rent on time. Well, I can still keep it. Actually, I know that in this state, I'm entitled to receive my security deposit back from you within 30 days as long as there's no damages or overdue rent, and there's not. Huh? And I'm not giving it back, so good luck. Well, I didn't want to do this, but I'll just put in writing that you haven't returned my security deposit X and I know my rights under state law Y. I can then Google small claims court in my town and I can take you to court, no attorney required. Oh, I don't know about that. As long as I have good proof, there's a good chance I'll win. Okay, I'll give it back. Mm-hmm, and that's why I follow Jess. I don't know if Jess is a lawyer. I like some of her tips, but what I will add is that if your landlord never sent you a certified letter telling you what portion of your security deposit they intend to keep, and it has been 60 days, you could go the small claims court route and try to litigate it yourself. Obviously, you could do that. But if your landlord has done that and it's been 60 days, in certain states, especially in Florida, they have waived their right to your security deposit. If you told your landlord where you're moving to, and that landlord never sent you a certified letter telling you what they're going to keep, that landlord likely forfeited their right to your security deposit. You don't need to wait around for 60 days to then have the landlord dodge in your phone calls. Most people would call somebody like me, and then we'd investigate and see if we could file a lawsuit. Most of the time, we file them as class actions because they're likely not discriminating against you, tenant, this is probably their practice nationwide. And some of these complexes represent tons and tons and tons of different single family homes, apartments, condos, multifamily units. This is a systematic problem that occurs across the country. What should you include when writing a letter to refund security deposits? Typically, you'll want to add some of these things. The name and contact details of the landlord, the name and contact details of the tenant, the letter's date, the percentage of the security deposit returned, a complete breakdown of all the reductions that were made from the security deposit return letter with a complete explanation of each. Any supporting documentation and photos that may be relevant based on the identified deductions. A copy of either the security deposit agreement or the lease agreement, which will detail what the tenant agreed to. And of course, the signature of the property manager or an authorized representative. Okay, so there's one big thing that I disagree with here. You can't send a portion of the security deposit to the tenant and just say, yeah, here's what we're refunding. Here's an itemization of why we only gave you a portion back. A lot of states would require the landlord to give notice to the tenant and give the tenant the ability to challenge the landlord's finding that they are going to keep some of the security deposit. I don't think sending a check to the tenant and saying, hey, tenant, here's why we're keeping a portion of your security deposit. I don't think that cuts it. I think that that's gonna land the landlord in hot water. Three tips to get your security deposit back from your landlord. One, the second you walk in, take videos and pictures of everything. Take long videos, don't miss any spots. Number two, before you move out, deep clean everything. Don't give the landlord a reason to take your money. Number three, the day you move out, take videos and pictures of everything. This will stop the landlord from saying you damaged things that you didn't. And it will give you the evidence that you need to take your landlord to small claims court for illegally taking your deposit. Freedom fighter. One of us. One of us. One of us. I love it, baby. People looking out for the little guy, the tenants. I agree with everything that he said. The only thing that I would add to this attorney's three tips, I would add a fourth tip, which is 60 days or more before you intend to move out, 
you should send an email to everybody at your apartment complex that you have an email address for saying, my name is tenant so-and-so, I live at unit X, and I am terminating my lease as of today's date, and here is my new mailing address where you can send my security deposit. Make sure that that mail is delivered, that it doesn't get kicked back, and that is enough to put your landlord on notice of your new address where they can send the certified letter to put you on notice if they are keeping any portion of your security deposit. Now, if they do not send you the certified letter, that landlord may have waived their right to keep any portion of your security deposit. As always, lawyers like me take security deposit cases on a contingent fee basis. No fee unless you win. No upfront costs for you. We're going to advance all of it. And oh, by the way, if you win, you get damages and the landlord will be on the hook for our attorney's fees and costs. If you have a question about your rights as a tenant or you think your landlord's doing something shady and you want us to know about it, let us know in the comment section. Feel free to DM. I'm happy to discuss it with you. Like, follow. If you know somebody that needs help with a security deposit case, please inform them of their rights. Love y'all. Legal Bro, out.